Hello and welcome to worship on a Sabbath Sunday or Sabbath sometime over the weekend. I hope that you had a wonderful 4th of July Independence Day and celebrate it with your friends, family, or with just rest as whatever is appropriate for you. Let us come together in worship. God is mighty in word and deed. God's mercy is everlasting. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever. Let us worship God. our sins to God, whose power is made perfect in our weakness. Holy God, you call us to boldly proclaim your name, yet we are stubborn and rebellious and heedless to your call. By the power of your Spirit, raise us to new life, that we may return to faithful living. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Beloved siblings in Christ, God's grace and mercy are never ending. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Therefore, be at peace. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, when we become stubborn and unbelieving, open our hearts to receive your word. Then set us free to follow in the power of Christ's love. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Gospel reading today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. We'll take it in two parts and then have some reflection questions to think through together. Reading from Mark 6, verse 1. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Aren't these his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed by their unbelief. Have you ever had this experience where your history with someone or your perception of them limits the way you see them, or what you believe about them? Has anyone ever been limited in their perception of you? This is what happens to Jesus in his hometown. All of the people's assumptions about him, maybe because of his work history, maybe because of um, being raised in their perception by a single mom, maybe because he's just one of the lowly from their community, one of them. Whatever it is, they cannot hear what he's saying to them. It steals the power of their relationship. And so in verse five, we have a most astounding, astonishing statement. Jesus could do no acts of power because of their unbelief. The Son of God could do no acts of power among them because they did not believe in him, because they were limited by their perception of him what a thing to wonder about today. What do we make of this statement? What does it tell us about the impact of community? These are questions to which we do not know the answer. What did the gospel writer mean? Jesus could do no acts of power. But they are worth pondering today, discussing with whomever you find yourselves. And may the word live richly among us in our discussion and our pondering.
Picking up our gospel story again at verse 6b of chapter 6 of the book of Mark. Then Jesus went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay in that place until you leave. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and they proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. After our first story where Jesus reveals to us the power of community, he sends his disciples out by twos, no one alone from there on. And he sends them on a mission that depends on hospitality. They can't take anything with them. They have no reservations at a hotel, no Airbnb booking. They have to depend on the hospitality, the kindness of strangers to lodge and feed them, to give them what they need. Hospitality is one of the foundational values, teachings of our Holy Scripture. In the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament, hospitality is so, so important in the story of God's people. Not only on this mission, when and where was the last time that you opened yourself up to be hospitable? When or where have you opened yourself to receive hospitality? Is hospitality something that comes easily to you or that you have to work at? Imagine if those disciples came to you today, what would your response be? How might you show hospitality? How might you not? 
in the version of this story in the Gospel of Luke in chapter 9 the disciples go on a mission of peace Luke adds a verse that says when you enter any home say may peace be upon this home let your peace remain there upon them he charges them to go in peace and this mission that the writer of mark reports is also a mission of peace though it is not as clearly stated but when the bible talks about a message of repentance what it's really saying is take a message of change to those who are suffering tell them that change is possible that's what the word repent means. That's what we should understand when we read that word. And so it causes me to wonder how I, how you, how we might be bringing a message of peace and hope to those who we meet from day to day when you go out this day on a mission that is more well uh, resourced <laughs> i imagine you don't just have a staff with you when you leave the house but when we go out in our time and our place how are we increasing the peace of those we meet how are we sharing hope in a world where so many are suffering and desire for change May God speak to us through our pondering about this, through the voices of those we are with, that we might discuss and think and wrestle, that we might too follow the instructions of Jesus to go out, to let our peace rest upon those we meet and to share with them the hope of change. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who transforms our weakness into strengths, receive the prayers we lovingly offer on behalf of the church and the world. Our world is an anxious place divided by ideologies, and we grow more stubborn and impertinent each day. Break down the barriers that exist among peoples and nations. Restore and strengthen our common life. Give to your church a bold vision and a daring love to speak and act on behalf of your mission to restore all people and creation in peace. Teach us to trust simplicity and travel light together. Comfort all who suffer, suffer in body, mind, and spirit, especially those members in our community who were not able to be with us in church on a typical Sunday. Expand our compassion, increase our faith, and make us whole as we work together for the healing of those in need. Eternal God, we remember those who are dying and those who have died. Draw them into your heavenly realm with you, Christ, and the Holy Spirit, that they may dwell with you in paradise. And so joining our prayers together with Christians in every time and place, we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and glory forever. Amen.
to love and serve the Lord and one another. May the love of God, the power of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit dwell richly in you forever. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 